Welcome back YouTube. Uh, the point of this video, I want to discuss some of the things that you want to look for when you're buying a Kalashnikov pattern rifle or AK-47 pattern rifle. It's a few different um, factors and things you want to check out and a lot of little details that you want to check for and look for. Uh, this video is not really supposed to be about the variants of them because you know you could go into a whole uh, bunch of different stuff about the different variants and uh, makes and models and things of that nature. I will, uh, as I go through here and show examples, I will uh, mention uh, manufacturers and models as they pertain to the things I'm talking about here. But all in all, let's get started. Uh, the first AK that we're going to have a look at, we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. We're going to look at one of these inner ordnance model C's and uh, we're going to look at some of the things on this that you, you might want to look at if you're considering buying one. All right, now we're looking at the inner ordnance model C or the AK-47 slash C. They make a few basic variants of this rifle. One of the, some of the things you want to look for with these, um, being an inner ordnance gun, I will admit that these particular guns are put together really hastily and in some cases the workmanship, uh, workmanship on these is not really up to par what you would think. One area you can look at are the rivets. All right, I'm going to zoom in on these rivets. Okay, look carefully at these rivets. You notice that they're not really seated all that great. Some of them aren't straight. You'll see this in some of the cheaper AK builds that they're just not quite pressed in all the way. And basically it's just it's just shoddy worksmanship to an extent. All right, and that's just one of the things you can look for. I'll show you an AK that's properly riveted here in a second. Now, while I've got the camera zoomed in, when they install some of the rivets on these guns, you'll notice too that like with this particular rivet, see how it's pressed in too hard and it, it calls the receiver right there to cave in? That's another thing to look for. It's just crappy workmanship, I mean, to an extent. Now. The reason I'm showing you this stuff, I'm not down, downplaying inner ordinances AKs. All I'm saying is if you are going to buy an inner ordinance AK, you want to take your time and look for little things like this. Make sure all the rivets are seated nice and firm and everything's put together straight. Also on these inner ordinance guns, look at the scope rail. So a lot of times you'll find that they're, that they're definitely not, not installed straight. In fact, if I look down this AK, you can see that the scope rail is definitely not straight. On some of the Arsenal builds and other, uh, you know, higher end AK builds, you'll find that uh, the scope rails that pay a little more attention to putting these on, installing them, and uh, it's just a higher quality uh, build than what you would see here. Okay, the next area I'm going to cover on the inner ordnance is the overall fit and finish of the rifle, and right here with the with the sight base and everything right here, we can see on this AK where this gun was dipped in the hot bluing solutions and a lot of the salts and everything worked their way out of the tiny crevices and stuff. And this gun actually came from the factory like this. So this is one of the things you want to look for also. Um, this particular gun really, you know, if I bought it, I'd be kind of ticked off to get it like this. But this is one of those things, even us as a dealer, we could send this back and, you know, raise, raise hell about it and maybe get this uh, replaced. But this is just an example of the worksmanship that you can come to expect from inner ordinance. They basically just sling them in the hot bluing tanks, pull them out, hose them down, and they don't care if, you know, the overall fit and finish is not, you know, decent. All right, so that's something to look for. Look for bluing salts leaking out of small cracks and crevices. All right, on these inner ordnance guns, and really any any AK, no matter how nice the build, it's going to be really difficult for me to show this in this video. But you want to look for how straight the barrel looks in relation to the trunnion. Uh, a lot of these inner ordnance guns, you'll notice that the barrel tends to be kind of cocked off here to the right or left. If they rivet the trunnion in and it's not set up straight, the barrel's not going to be straight. In fact, you can pretty much see the pitch in the barrel. Uh, from the back of this gun that it's slightly to the right. I mean, it's barely. But notice how the front sight post is canted over to the left. It's almost like they set this gun up 
to correct for the fact that the, you know the barrel itself isn't straight you're going to get a little bit of pitch which isn't a real big issue as long as it's a serviceable amount of pitch I mean every AK is going to have a slight you know variance like that that's just something to look for on these uh, inner ordnance guns or any AK uh, century guns get a lot of bad rap and uh, basically I've got one of the Polish Tanto builds here on the right and then we've got one of the Wasser 10 builds on the left uh, the Wasser 10s available from Century they, they vary in quality depending on the type of receiver you end up getting um, in the case of this one on the left here we're going to look at, uh, closely at the magazine opening here and you know a lot of these Wasser 10s were uh, Clinton guns and they had to you know have uh, receivers that would only accept 10 round magazines it's probably going to be hard to tell in this video but when you're shopping for one of these look for the cuts on the receiver here where they basically just took a Dremel tool and Dremeled out the receiver to accept standard uh, 30 round magazines there's nothing wrong with one of these types of builds but just be careful because a lot of times they just go through and uh, they just hastily cut the magazine well and your magazine lockup may not be ultra great so you got a little bit of wobbling here uh, if you get a lot of, of rearward, rearward and forward movement in the magazine uh, it could be enough to where the magazine will fail to strip around off when the gun cycles and that's where some of these sentry builds start to get uh, known for their poor quality and worksmanship it's just from the magazine um, slot not being cut properly and that you know the magazine's not feeding right but other than that, they're decent builds, especially you get one with the uh, Tapco two-hook trigger. It doesn't slap back on you as bad. Uh, very decent AK for the money. If we look at the Tantal, you'll see that there's no cut at all. And this, this receiver is, you know, from the ground up, was intended to accept, you know, the 30-round magazines. You'll notice there's no wobble. I'm wobbling this magazine. There's no uh, movement back and forth or side to side. So the lockup on this Tantal is excellent. Yet, it is a Century gun, so that's something to consider. Century does make good guns. You just have to know what to look for. Now that you've seen a few of the things that you want to check for, we're going to talk real quickly about this Arsenal. Um, and what, you know, what makes Arsenal such a good AK-47? You know, a lot of people associate the name Arsenal with a good Kalashnikov variant, and uh, rightly so. They built a name for themselves that revolves around using quality parts, quality worksmanship. And granted, the Kalashnikov variant of rifle is a relatively loosely patterned and loosely put together type of gun anyway. I mean, they're designed to run in adverse weather conditions when uh, you've got a lot of buildup, they're designed to run no matter what so when you have a design that's set up that way it's going to have a certain amount of loose tolerance to allow for those adverse conditions and everything of that nature with an arsenal your receiver starts out as a, um, a Sega receiver like a standard Sega sporting rifle and basically in the same way that uh, Ray went through and did the 922R compliant uh, conversion on the Sega 12 Arsenal out in Las Vegas, they pretty much do the same thing. And uh, they add your pistol grip, your, your combat style stock, your vented grips, your brake, you know, and all the nice evil accessories that you would expect to find on a Kalashnikov. Excellent gun, made well, they run great. The scope mounts on them. I know I have the gun upside down relative to what you're looking at, but the scope mounts on them are straight. So that's just a few of the things you can look for when you're buying an AK, and hopefully that will, um, you know, give you an idea of what to look for, because there's a lot of good guns out there, and there's also a lot of junk, and you have to know how to tell the difference between the two. Happy shopping.